one second. Hold on, sorry. Um, welcome to the NCAA March Madness first round post game press conference. Please take this time to silence your cell phones and remember no flash photography is permitted. Also, the only distribution for this event is through NCAA protocols. So please remember that as well so no other outside recording. We are joined by Kansas head coach Brandon Schneider and athletes Samaya Nichols and Zakaya Franklin. We ask that you please only ask a question when you have the microphone in your hand and that you state your name and publication each time you are handed the microphone. If you've joined us through Zoom, please raise your hand and include your name and publication when you are called on as well. Thank you, we will begin with an opening statement from coach, move to questions for the athletes and then back to coach. Uh, I, you know, give Michigan a lot of credit. I thought they were by far the best team uh, for three quarters. Um, Williams, in particular, um, you know, did some things to us, and and um, that typically um, players don't have success with, and that's you know being very aggressive in in attacking uh, Jackson. Um, but I couldn't be prouder of our team's resilience, and um, they never fragmented. Uh, they just stayed the course and um, obviously made some really, really big plays offensively that, um, you know, were preceded by, you know, key stop after key stop and um, made made a lot of big threes tonight, but none bigger than, um, you know, fifth year senior Zakiah Franklin. I couldn't be prouder uh, of her. Questions from the room? Let's start in the back. Ben Hook, the University Daily Kansan. Uh, Coach, how, how do you keep your team composed and keep them ready to get back in a game when you go down by 10 points with that little time on the clock? Uh, you know, I think that's, um, you know, experience and leadership and, uh, and then you have a, a freshman in, um, you know, Samaya that's just beyond her years in terms of her poise and composure. So, um, you know, I think our team believes in each other. Uh, they're very proud of what they've become. And, um, you know, I, I just think that there's a, a, a great level of trust. We'll start with the athletes and then we'll revisit coach after they finish. Thank you. Kai, you had that huge three at the end of the game. Just walk me through, like, what was the play design? How did it end up in your hands? And then just kind of the emotions going through and taking that into overtime. Um, pretty much we run this play all the time when it's late clock. Um, we kind of ran it, and they took away the main two options that we had. And um, it's just one option that's pretty always open, and it actually was. So I kind of just shot the ball. So uh, from that, the emotions were still high. We felt like we were still having time to play. and. Um, as you can see, like everyone was excited, but it was still, you know, more to be done. Mike, can you talk about what it means to have a leader like this step up, not only in that play, but kind of throughout the game, had over 20 points, played really well today? 100%. Yeah, KB is, I feel like one of a kind player. She can do many things that I know I can't do. Um, <laughs> but just the trust that everyone and the team has for her. Um, we trust her to get to the rack. We know that. She can provide um, on offense and defense for this team, and I feel like she played great on both sides of the ball. David Waxman, Big 12 Conference for Zakaya. Uh, that shot, the game tying shot, when it bounced off the rim, what was going through your mind? Did you know it was going to roll in, or what was going through your mind? Like Coach said today, he was like, you must be living right. So that, I mean, I'm thinking like, okay, I shot the ball. Um, from there, it hit the rim a couple times. So I'm like, it has to go in. But uh, we lived with, with the results, and uh, we're su we survived and we advanced. So. For Samaya, uh, this was your first NCAA tournament game. Uh, did it live up to the hype of March Madness? What was going through your head playing this first game? Yes, I think March is honestly about getting everyone's best basketball. And I feel like Michigan definitely delivered, like he said, for the um, three quarters. I mean, they played great the whole game, for real. 
and um, I think it lived up to it. It was exciting, um, back and forth, not easy, and I mean, that's what we play for. Ben Hook, University of Ailey, Kansan. Uh, for Samaya, you sort of struggled for about three quarters of the game, and then you, find you found yourself in that fourth quarter. What did you have to change about your game to sort of get, get going and get those shots going in the fourth quarter, and especially in overtime? Yeah. Um, I felt like at that point, I was just going to need to make the right play, whether that's um, hitting my teammate for an open shot, whether that is boxing out, that's the play always. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> but um, an aggressive box out, um, just pressuring the ball. I had to contribute in some way, and I feel like I definitely made that switch. And then um, just, you know, knocking down the free throws. Do we have any last questions for the athletes? All right, you can move on to questions for coach. Thank you. Casey Kaslin or Annenberg Media. Coach, you guys kind of started out slow to begin the game, but obviously picked it up towards the end. What was sort of the turning point in your mind uh, as the game went on? I thought there was multiple turning points. Um, you know, Michigan came out and um, played zone on all makes, which uh, threw us off a little bit. That was not something that we had practiced. Uh, hadn't seen them do that much at all, you know, this year. And finally got into a little bit of a rhythm and made some threes. Uh, I thought Ryan Cobbins came off the bench and, and made some big plays. Uh, but ultimately, um, we just played too timid defensively. Uh, we got in a little bit of foul trouble, and, and uh, we were, weren't near as assertive as we needed to be. So I thought the third quarter, um, the fourth quarter, we really picked up our defensive intensity and, and were able to feed off of that. Hi, Lily Coleman, Annenberg Media. Um, when the game went into overtime, I just, I'm curious what you told your team, like what the biggest goals were. Um, for play in overtime? Yeah, just keep getting stops, um, number one. I, I think that's what really got us back in the game. And then, um, you know, we were in the bonus. So, uh, you know, challenged uh, everyone to just, you know, don't leave the offensive end uh, without a paint touch and an opportunity to get to the free throw line. Zach Edwards, Michigan Daily. Uh, kind of same question I had for Samaya. What did you think of um, Sakai's, Sakai Franklin's performance today and how she just stepped up? You know, um, the kid's a winner, and uh, that's why we recruited her. You know, our, our program um, uh, came from the very, very bottom of, of the Power Five, and uh, we needed a kid like that that was used to winning that – Quite frankly, uh, if you came up short, was going to be pissed off when you got on the bus or the plane, and um, you know I, that's that's all she's done is is help uh, change our program around. And I think it's very very fitting um, that maybe one of the bigger plays in Kansas women's basketball history. Um, another question: You guys are a very experienced group this year, and last <laughs> year won the WNIT and looking to really cement yourself as an NCAA tournament team. And you get the win. What does it mean just for this program to be able to? move on to that second round? I mean, you know, it means a lot, especially playing um, a team as good as Michigan and uh, a program as established, I think, six straight NCAA tournament appearances. So, um, you know, we're just trying to be a real program and, um, you know, one that can uh, advance in the NCAA tournament and, and hopefully one day compete for Big 12 titles. Any last questions? David Waxman, Big 12 Conference. Uh, there's been a couple of big comebacks in the tournament this year. Uh, obviously, Iowa State, Middle yeah. Tennessee. When you're down nine in the fourth quarter, <clears throat> is that something you tell your team about, or is it really just uh, you know, about No, no, we, don't, we, we wouldn't talk about that in, in game. Um, but, David, you know, I, uh, I was part of a game – uh, we were down six with 2.6 seconds left, and we won. So we do talk about that, you know, nothing is outside of, um, you know, you play 
you play till the buzzer goes off and um, you compete hard and um, but but obviously we, uh, we we talked about at dinner last night just um, Audie's performance at Iowa State's comeback uh, that's a, a program that um, you know we respect a great deal so uh, there was some conversations about that performance and we do have a question from the zoom that'll be channeled in through some speakers okay Brandon on Zoom. Oh, hey, sorry. Hey, hey coach, this is <laughs> this is later right art with uh, KSNT here in Topeka. Uh, but we, we know that you know what these girls were uh, capable of, but, you, you know, s seeing them put it together, especially down the stretch, how, how vindicating is that for you, knowing all the work that you've put in? I, you know, I'm just proud of them. Uh, they've, they've been a really resilient group, and, um, you know, the, the sense of urgency that they played with in February to position themselves to be a tournament team, um, it doesn't surprise me that, uh, that they are not phased, um, you know, being down 10. Uh, in, I think in the fourth quarter. So, um, you know, it's an experienced group, a confident group. Um, you know, just proud of them. Thanks, Coach. All right, more questions? Thank you so much, Coach. Welcome to the NCAA March Madness first round post game press conference. Please take this time to silence your cell phones and remember no flash photography is permitted. We would also like to remind you that no outside recording or distribution is permitted by the NCAA and quilts will be available shortly afterward. We are joined by Michigan head coach Kim Barnes Arico and athletes Layla Felia and Cameron Williams. We ask that you please only ask questions when you have the microphone in your hand and that you state your name and publication each time you are handed the microphone. If you have joined us through Zoom, please raise your hand and include your publication when you are called on as well. Thank you, and we will begin with an opening statement from the coach and move on to questions from the athletes and then back to coach. Uh, congratulations to Kansas. Um, they had a really big fourth quarter against us, um, and you know we had a, I think it was a 10 point lead. Um, and they were able to get downhill and really get to the free throw line. You know, one of our game plans was to try to keep them off the line. And I thought we did an awesome job of that in the first half. Um, but in the fourth quarter, they were really able to go to the line. I think that hurt us a ton um, as well. They made plays down the stretch. Um, when we had the lead, they had to make uh, big buckets down the stretch, and they found a way to make those plays. Um, so a credit to them. Questions for the athletes? Zach Edwards, Michigan Daily. Um, you guys were able to get Tana Jackson and Samaya um, Nichols in foul trouble early, and that really opened up the game on offense. Can you talk about what was going well within those first three quarters for you guys to kind of maintain control? 
Yeah, I think we did a good job at playing team defense as a whole. You know, that was, you know, our game plan to come and build and really build in on number one um, just because she's a huge presence for them as well. But I think we really locked into that in the first half of the game. Hi, Megan Smith, Michigan Daily. Cam, you led the team in points today. You had 18, really great game. Can you just talk about what it meant to get the start uh, and get those 18 points? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it meant a lot. I think just doing whatever I can to help my team be successful is where my head's at, you know, no matter what position I'm coming from. But I'm, I think the biggest thing is going out there and playing with my team means the most. You guys are good to go. And we're now open to quote to questions for coach. Thank you. Um, Zach Edwards, Michigan Daily. Coach Sakai Jackson had a really strong game today. Was able to drive in and had that that big three in the fourth quarter. Can you just talk about her performance and what? was going well for her. Yeah, she killed she killed us even in the first half. Um, you know, we prepared all week for her crossover to go back to her left hand and um I, I thought we couldn't stop her, which is really unusual because we have great defenders and um I, I thought we just let her get back to her left hand a ton and then obviously the the last shot, um, you know, she had the the courage to take it, the courage to make a play um down the stretch of the game. So, um, yeah, she she had a heck of a game, and she you know, really caused us some problems for sure. And looking back at the season as a whole, it was a pretty inexperienced group with the program, a lot of transfers and freshmen. What would you say is, like, the identity of this program as, you, as it comes to a close? Yeah, I mean, that's something that we talked about in the locker room pregame, you know, before we went out tonight. And we just talked about, you know, the, the staples of our program and kind of what we stand for. And and the effort and the intensity and our ability to defend. And um, I thought we really did a great job of that for the majority of the game, um, but we couldn't finish it off. And, uh, you know, just proud of, uh, you know, I, I said our seniors and our, um, our kids that transferred to go to grad school here for their fifth year, um, you know, uh, Alyssa Brad and um, Lauren Hansen, you know, and just the impact that they made on our program and our senior class um, and their legacy of, you know, going to four straight tournaments, going to Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. Um, just, you know, coming into this year, and I've talked to you guys about this a number of times, we, we didn't know what this season was going to hold because we did have a lot of graduation and a lot of um, inexperience. Um, so for us to be in the positions we were so many times, um, I'm really proud of, proud of our group and, and proud of our program. Michigan Daily. Um, yeah, obviously one of those leaders that you were talking about, Cameron Williams, went out with a bang with 18 points. Can you just talk about how effective she was on offense against Savannah Jackson? Yeah, I mean, you know, all, all year long we've kind of gone back and forth with Cameron starting and, and Kyra starting. I think we're our best team when they both have the ability to be on the floor together. And obviously, you know, some of this stuff doesn't really mean anything. I have to go back and evaluate the film. But if you look at Cameron Williams, even though we, we lost by nine, you know, her plus minus for the game is zero. And if you look at Kyra Evans, her plus minus for the game is five, plus five. So they both had a major impact, and they both were able to be out there together and, and help us be successful. But we knew Cameron was going to have a great matchup going into the game. And I think Cameron's a, a player that felt like a lot of pressure coming into this season because of the strength of our post the last, you know, six, seven, eight years. Um, so she, um, you know, was, was working on getting her feet wet. And I, and I talked to her a lot about that through the course of this year. You know, Emily Kaiser was in a similar position her senior year to be our go-to person. Um, I think there was a weight or a load that Cameron felt on her shoulders sometimes. And it even happened tonight, you know, the first three or four minutes, you know, she was getting her feet wet and she might have been 0 for 4, 0 for 5. And, you know, her teammates had the confidence in her, just Cameron, take a deep breath, like you're going to be fine. Like just, just keep going, just keep working, just um, keep giving a great effort. 
and uh, you know we were able to find her. She she did a great job for us. I mean, at the turning point too was when she picked up her fourth foul, and you know she's out of the game. You know, then they just really started to get downhill and go inside. Um, so that just speaks to how much she impacted the game. But you know, proud proud coach for her. Um, she's just been you know in a relentless pursuit of getting better. I mean, she's just been unbelievable. Her effort, her lock-in to trying to be the best she can and to try and to help our team be successful is second to none. And, you know, as a coach, to watch your players come in where, where, where they are as freshmen and to have a career like, and the improvement and the development like Cameron has, it's just phenomenal. So I can't say enough about her um, and what she means to our program. In that fourth quarter and over time, how did Kansas kind of get that ability to pick up and, and really overtake that league and move on? Yeah, I mean, Cameron was on the bench probably most of it with her fourth um, until like four minutes to go, and they just were going high-low. They were just trying to isolate us inside um, and really take away that. And then, and then they were getting downhill, and they got to the free throw line, and we had our fifth foul on us probably with seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. That's dangerous. So I don't have the book on me, but the number of times they went to the free throw line in the fourth quarter was probably more than we went for the game. So when you have the ability to draw those fouls and get to the line early in the quarter, and you have a big, like, like they have, that doesn't take a lot of time off the clock to just flash, boom, throw it in there, um, it allowed them to, to come back in the game. I know it may be hard to look forward from this, but what are you looking forward to with five freshmen coming in and two really strong recruits and lo looking to build on this year? Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about it a lot. We've signed probably our best recruiting class ever. We have two All-Americans, but a class of five, that's phenomenal. We have a great core group um, returning and just really excited about um, the future of our program and, and trying to take those next steps um, for sure. Um, Jess, could you talk a little more about what you were hoping would happen on the final play of regulation with that tie game? Yeah, I mean, you know, we tried to get the ball in Layla's hands, um, and she's done it time and time again, and Layla and Cameron in a two-man game um, and trying to get downhill in a two-man game. And, um, you know, she, she was able to, and they called a charge, right? Is that the one that they called the charge? Okay, so um, you know we were just trying to like get the ball in Layla's hands. She's a tremendous playmaker, and um, you know have her and Cameron be in a two-man game and make a play. Even when we didn't get anything, I, I still felt like we were in good shape, um, you know, to get a stop up three. So that's the bummer. I mean, I got to go back. You guys are asking me it's all right now. And we have time for one last. Sort of zooming out, um, just looking at the senior class, the players who are leaving the program after this year, what's the impact that you've seen from them on the program, and what do you hope that the rest of the team is learning from them? Yeah, I mean, the senior class is really special, first and foremost, the ones that have been with us for four years, which are three. Um, they came in during, a, during an interesting time. Their first year on campus was COVID. They didn't even go to class in person. Um, they've been through so much. Um, you know, I remember Elise Stuck telling me midway through, like in tears, like, I haven't made one friend. I'm in college, and I haven't been able to leave my apartment. Um, so it was definitely an interesting time for them. But, you know, they supported each other. They rallied around it, and they've just been phenomenal. I mean, they're, they're Michigan women. They represent what our program stands for. Um, and they left it all um, with our team. So I'm really proud of them. The, the two um, transfers that will graduate, Taylor Williams has another year, so she won't graduate. But the other two as well, I mean, they're, they're two players that scored 1,000 points at their last place and had one year left to play and you know, had never been to the, to the NCAA tournament. And they believed that they could come and make a difference in, a, in one year at Michigan. And I'm just really proud of the both of them. And, you know, in a short period of time, kind of what they meant to our program. Um, they're two competitors, and they fit right in with our culture. Justin, thank you. Thank you. So you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks for making the trip. Always give us reviews.